uh, web web browsers. Web browsers actually, uh, these were a few that that we discussed. Or probably have a lot of, uh, by the way. So uh, as we discussed, Brave and uh, Firefox are like most security related, like strong enough uh, as per our experiences. It is still and the whole we we are still a good whole of these two. Okay. Then comes the Chrome. There are some uh, you can say breaches and all that stuff. So you have to be aware of these things, and you should be able to protect your uh, passwords, your privacy, and all the stuff you are accessing the internet. Okay, visual uh, diagramming we have over here. Um, and these are for for different kind of you can say um, a different kind of uh, a different kind of. Uh, 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 diagrams that you want to il illustrate for uh, for a workflows you can say like you want to uh, to make sure that this this how it is done this is how a software can be made this is how a process can be uh, made efficient or this is how a flow can be made so we have a visual diagramming also for uh, for for them also so cloud based options one of the most most like um, these days the entire application has just converted to cloud remember that okay in covid when the entire world was shut down so it was the cloud that was that was actually running the world okay that's why it got uh, you can say a very huge potential when they saw the potential of cloud so these days um wherever you are you just uh, you don't need to to spend thousands and thousands on on infrastructure on on all these things you just have to uh, purchase a cloud based uh, we can say platform or infrastructure for your organization if you want if you want to continue if you want to work on so you can do that and you can easily run um, uh, within your home wherever you're living so you just have to comply with that kind of free rules and regulations and you're good to go okay this is how it's done. So it, it has some immense, uh, I can say, potential and it's still growing on. Like in 2028, we will be having like um, uh, like thousands and thousands of these cloud operations job, even still today and in the very near future, you'll be required cybersecurity analyst, okay? Data analyst, crowd administrators, uh, IT support persons, support functions. The list goes on like you have variety of IT jobs, okay? You just go and they say, hey, I, I, you don't want to to go to, uh, let's suppose, South Africa to join our organization. You can do your job from your home, okay? You can just you can just uh, have those online ticketing system. You can close tickets. You can open the tickets. You can resolve their issues by remote sessions. We can give you the tools. And you'll be paid. This is how it's done. So this is how the world is actually growing on, and uh, this is how uh, the world is uh, going on. Uh, it is, uh, um, uh, yeah, uh, Land Reaction. Thank you so much. Uh, the visual diagram is also mine. If obviously is how you do uh, those things. It's normally done in research, most probably like in research uh, based purposes. When you do uh, any network diagram, okay, you do those uh, diagram thing. Uh, we will just come to that and I'll just show how are these blueprints like made up, how can we proceed with a professional approach, okay? So these were actually the cloud-based operations. Uh, one of the uh, best cloud-based, like you can say, infrastructure is portal.azo.com. Um, you can sign up for those. These are totally uh, cloud-based. Uh, we have also Google cloud base. We also have alibaba.com cloud base. We also have... Uh, Amazon AWS cloud. So there are like so many cloud um, platforms these days and they are actually working um, a day and night and organization are like running super smoothly on that, okay? So uh, you don't have to be worried about the power cut off, the, your systems, you can say issues, troubleshooting and all. They're just on the vendor side. Microsoft will take care of that. You just have to pay the rent for your systems. Simple is that, this is how it's done, okay? So then we have, obviously, we have uh, done with the web posters, spreadsheets, presentation, web browsers, okay? Collaboration softwares, discussion boards. Um, does any have a recommendation for uh, a good kitchen knife? I'm a big fan of uh, uh, Victorian Ox, Febrox Pro, great knife for a great price. So you, you can see these are the discussion. Uh, you can say uh, bold is how you discuss things. You want to purchase something and you have an experience you want to share with others. So these are all collaboration software that we are dealing with. Screen sharing, obviously. 
uh, some um, some quick like if you just uh, write down uh, if you just write down at your bottom left corner if you're using windows you have by the name of quick assist okay you have an application in play store i have just also uh, uh, type that quick assist this is for remote control whenever you want to have remote control of another pc you can just uh, you can just do a remote, uh, you can have a screen share, you can just troubleshoot accordingly. Or one of the other one, very important one is any disk, okay? Super light, like four MB of applications we have any disk, and you just, you, you just have to install on your both uh, systems or and you have to, uh, you have to, you have to share the IDs and you can see other, each other screen and you can, uh, people can tell their issues to you, you can resolve that. This is how it is done, being in IT, you should be able, Teamweaver is one of the best example, okay? Uh, and many people might have used that or heard about it, but these three are one of the top ones, okay? Quick Assist, AnyDisk, Teamweaver. Teamweaver is paid, so you just have to avoid that. AnyDisk is okay, you can use that for MB very light software, very like you can say uh, with functions. And Quick Assist is built in of Microsoft, okay? It is also super great, so you can have the experience of Quick Assist as well, okay? These are screen sharing. We have conferencing software as we discussed. Um, Zoom is one of them, uh, Microsoft Teams from Microsoft. Uh, we have Google Meet also from Google. So you're having a lot of options these days. The best thing is whichever works fine for you according to your requirements, just go for it, okay? That's how it's done. You should know uh, the comparison. You should know the names, okay? Uh, some organization, when you go for a job, they may say, hey, we use Google uh, Teams. And you will tell them, no, I cannot use Google Teams because my instructions say that only Zoom is the best one. So I uh, I have no experience and I, I know nothing about it. It doesn't work like that, okay? These all conferencing tool, for example, if you're having on the Zoom, even if someone asks you, you just have to quickly just search in the interface all the things, the idea is actually related, okay? You can very uh, quickly uh, find out a way to adjust yourself, okay? Being in IT, you, sh you should be like super flexible, okay? You should be flexible. You should be like, uh, you may, uh, your boss may say, hey, we don't want to use Zoom from today. From tomorrow, I just want to use Teams. You did just have to switch the entire company to the to the Teams application. You just have to do a quick training for them and that, that's that's it. This is how it's done. So um, these are conferencing software. Uh, this is how uh, we do, we share resources, we meet with each other. By the way, they have um, they have limited those, um, those travel costs. So you don't need to travel um, like uh, two continents um, uh, from your country. You can just create a simple Zoom meeting like, like, like we are having it now. I think uh, we are like from most of uh, like uh, more than uh, 10 countries, different 10 countries, right? So obviously we have different cultures, we have different, you can say continents, we, can, we have different kind of, uh, uh, you can say lands over there, different architecture. So uh, all things are super great in their own shape, right? So uh, uh, every country is like uh, super, super great how it is. So. This is how uh, we respect each other, right? So, but still we're like collaborated with a single tool. Now, uh, this is the best thing. This is the, the great thing. You don't have to tell them to leave the job. You don't have to go uh, to, uh, to the airport and do the booking and do the accommodation and uh, spend like, like 50K on coming and going with this, uh, attending only the single training. You, you're just sitting on your home or your office or you, your friend's house. Uh, and you're just enjoying uh, state-of-the-art experiences. How great is that? How things are like super like simple for us these days. It's just our efforts, just our confidence and just our motivation to get into it. So um, this is one of the uh, conferencing tool, obviously. Oh, and uh, uh, and some of the, uh, I can say the emailing uh, already, the collaboration softwares as uh, email, uh, Gmails, we, we, we have a different kind of, you can say, domains within emails. Now, all are the collaboration. You share files, you receive email, you do communication. That's just like super sorted, right? You can track your communication with your officials, with your organizations, and uh, they are like sorted. And it is acceptable, by the way, everywhere across the world. So 
uh, these are all collaboration tools. So our world is like more streamlined, right? So desktop is obviously a Microsoft Outlook. You can also install the desktop version. On the web, you can use the Yahoo and also the same version on the web also. So uh, these are a few examples of collaboration. We have the calendaring. So uh, please do use these, uh, these use software. It's very, very professional. It, it makes you that, hey, this is actually, uh, he or she is actually the uh, real IT person, okay? That's how they utilize the, these tools, okay? So this is calendaring. You just have to go to the, your calendar and you just have to sign in with your uh, account, um, your Outlook account, your Gmail account, your Hotmail account, Yahoo, whatever you have. You just have to uh, make that event, for example, if you let's suppose uh, we are um, uh, we are having like let's suppose we are having only one uh, other week for for this session and that's a great news. Thank you so much all for making to this stage. So um, uh, you only have your last coming week um, to complete the course. That's a great news for you. So you can just mark, hey, I have a coming week class and you can mark that and you can mark the time. So whenever that date and time arrives, it will obviously give you a reminder in uh, 15 minutes prior. So um, uh, yeah, it can remind you and you can sort out your things easily. So this is how you done the calendaring and you can sort out your things. Instant messaging is one of the example, uh, Facebook Messenger, Instagram, WhatsApp, all are instant messaging applications. You share uh, resources, you share your family, uh, uh, communication you just uh, you, you just share resources do uh, updates uh, chat with the uh, colleagues chat with your officials so uh, these are all collaboration softwares text messaging are one of the older one i think almost it's up absolutely by by coming to the web by whatsapp by facebook by those social apps very rare i i I personally don't think I normally don't see like after weeks and weeks since we are so much connected with with the online stuff, we have really time for for such uh, for such online uh, we can say for such offline kind of text messaging. But still, it is a collaboration software. We were using that. If you go like ten years back, uh, this was actually one of the great collaboration software that you were having your cell phone. Okay, um, and we have online workspace. Um, they they do all their announcements. They're all a proper kind of. Uh, you can say uh, notices of uh, updates for events and community. So uh, that also come under the, um, the collaboration software. These are the things that we have discussed, okay? Project management, customer relationship, one of the uh, super, you can say, it will always, always be like um, in demand, okay? In IT, one of the best job is also the customer relationship management, okay? This is how you facilitate customer, okay? Not all people are technical. So even they may uh, they may call you, like they may just call you, okay, uh, so let, let's just pick out, let's just say, uh, let's just say, for example, um, um, let's just pick uh, Hakim over here. So Hakim is just uh, uh, our new student and he just has landed in a new job of IT support in customer relationship management uh, domain. So he just received uh, his very first call in the morning and uh, uh, the customer is asking, hey, I cannot log into, in, into my email, what happened? So you can just uh, use any disk or can just uh, tell the customer that if you can just show me or share the screenshot of, of your issue, I can resolve that within, uh, within a short period of time. So this is how you troubleshoot things. Every time you get new things and you are like, um, you get experience and this is how you grow in IT, okay? When you get experience, you step up. When you get experience, you step up. It is super, super like great, always growing field, okay? That's a great part. You will never get old in IT, simple as that. You'll always be young, okay? Just going with the flow, simple. We have accounting also, obviously, a software of business software of accounting, one of the best in like, uh, by the name of I Scala for the hotlink system. I have worked on the accounting sector on those servers and all the stuff. So they have some immense kind of, you can say potential, okay? In IT, all those things are like, if you just jump into any field, you'll just, um, if you just feel to, uh, if you just like jump into any of these field, you'll just, uh, you'll just see, hey, I have just, I know nothing about these kind of things. So, um, uh, in IT, you can say that whenever you um, 
get the knowledge, you'll just explore in it, okay? You just say as accounting, what, what's like uh, the, the problem in accounting and IT are two, totally two different things. But normally in Thai department, if it is finance, uh, I can say if it's purchasing, sales, okay? If it's engineering, all of these departments are connected with IT. They have those software at the very, even if they say that we don't need IT, they'll still be, uh, they'll still be always asking the IT support for their, for their softwares. So you will be actually the person, you will be the dedicated IT person that will be collaborating with the vendor to troubleshoot their servers issues, the, those uh, finance softwares, those accounting softwares, those purchasing software issues. So you'll be, you'll be learning a lot, that's for sure, okay? So uh, you just name um, desktop publishing, you have um, a lot of graphics uh, stuff side. If you just go over there, you just make your career on the graphics side, video editing, you can say fashion, you can just go for, for, for text art, for photo editing, and the list goes on. You have a lot of uh, tools like most popular are Adobe Photoshop, one of the best like uh, we were having it, but these days we, have, we are having Canva and we are having also other Adobe Premiere and, uh, and, and the list goes on. So these are all graphic side uh, software. You just learn one of these IT software. You're good with that. You have the foundation of the IT. Uh, you will be super skillful person, that's for sure. But the, but the rule for that is you have to dedicate yourself for that domain. If it's graphic designing, you have to be a super, super cool graphic designer. That's for every requirement. If someone asks, you should be able to answer in yes, okay? Uh, uh, always, always remember, as we say, as we say, I'm repeating again, always remember, there is never no in IT, okay? You will never ever say, uh, no, I cannot do, this is not my job. So yeah, you're just accepting those IT related jobs, okay? This is how you get polished. This is how you get expert in your domain, okay? That's for sure. So this is how it's done. You said this good uh, old Spider-Man. I think most probably he's just chatting or maybe it's Avatar or maybe some kind of uh, uh, 3D cartoon, something. I think it's Spider-Man, by the way, right? So uh, by the way, okay. Uh, it's just the, um, the graphic design that we're having. Uh, 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 that we're having the experience in those. So uh, I, as I was saying, all of, the, all of these uh, equipments, all of these things are connected with the IT. So you have the base, you have the foundation level, you just select any, any of these fields and you'll be like super cool with that, okay? Um, computer edit uh, designs for uh, the mechanical engineering and all the stuff, you see how these, uh, airplane engines are made, how these uh, engineering stuff are made. These are all, uh, these are all designed, these car engines uh, and all the stuff, these are all designed by the computer edit uh, design softwares, okay? That's also like um, related to the graphics. I have like more like graphic stuff, but um, it is more, uh, you can say, related to the engineering side you you have to be like um, having some experience also in that so we also you, you'll also be required to have such troubleshooting tactics to resolve these people issue as well okay so um uh, these are the business softwares as we discussed databases project management customer relationship management accounting desktop publishing graphic design and okay? computer edit design over here. We will just jump into a very, very um, ground scenario of Cisco Packet Tracer, our good old friend. And uh, we will make sure um, to pick some, uh, uh, some real time questions today. So let's suppose um, you, have just, um, you have just completed the course and uh, you just went to supermarket, okay? You went to a uh, supermarket um, and the owner say to you that, hey, uh, uh, kindly, or you can say, please design a network for my new supermarket, right? So he's gonna pay you by the way, okay? So that's a paid job, network from my new supermarket in downtown, right? So uh, this is requirement and, um, 
And obviously the answer would be, um, first of all, you'll have to ask, uh, can you please, uh, can you please, um, uh, can you please list your requirements? So he'll be sharing these all requirements with you. And uh, this is how we start our work, okay? So now let's suppose, uh, first of all, you have to make sure um, where the router is placed uh, or if uh, there's already a router, so your work starts after the router, remember, okay? So let's suppose this is, um, and this is our, uh, um, this is the supermarket. They have already gotten the connection, okay? So uh, this is our main router, right? I'll uh, just make sure it is connected over here. And uh, uh, they have the internet access. So your work starts from uh, up to the router. So we have to put um, two switches uh, or maybe three switches to make it a little more, you can say, uh, so all areas can be connected, right? So uh, let's make let's make them connected to the internet, right? So uh, we have gotten over here, right? So uh, we just have to put also uh, end devices. End devices we discuss about. We have to put some reception PC over here. So this is how you make your like your very basic network. Okay, this is like real time. Okay. We have to tell, okay, we have to put two system on reception, okay? For the barcode scanning, for, for the codes, for the billing, okay, and all the stuff. So this is reception one and this is reception two, right? So this is a reception two. It is the same one. And uh, uh, we are having also a few uh, laptops over here for inventory, for our backend inventory, because this is our store switch. So uh, we can name them uh, as a inventory, uh, inventory labs, okay? Laptops, inventory system, right? And this is inventory two, got it? So uh, we have to connect them uh, over here. And obviously we have to give the connection also to this one. We also have to have, uh, this is the entire supermarket area over here. So we have to make sure that the internet, uh, we have the internet access. Everyone, every customer that are coming, they should have the internet access, right? So, um, yes, I have selected some. Kind of color to select some visible kind of color. Okay, great. So this is the entire supermarket area over here. The internet is coming. Uh, the owner has already given you the internet. So there are two systems. We have to give them connection from the switch, right? There's no problem until now, right? So we have given them two connection for the reception. And now uh, the owner also says that I have to put two or three access points, remember? Now there are three things in IT. These are super, super important, okay? You have to know the difference between a router, a switch, and an AP. AP stands for access point, right? We have done that yesterday, but we'll just repeat again. So make sure you are on the same page. Uh, access point we had also in the quiz, this one. So uh, let's just go for all these devices and just get an access point over here. And uh, let's just get an access point also over here, right? So uh, this may be, uh, this may be, you can say, all, all one access point, or maybe you can give the name of your supermarket, supermarket, let's suppose, um, I can say Z3, Z2, something like that. You're just assuming the scenario, okay? You're just assuming, remember that. This is zone three, okay? So these are the access point and obviously we have to give connection from any of the switch. We can give this access point a connection from this switch and this one from uh, on this switch, right? I think we are safe enough, right? Great. So, um, 
these are the switches these are these are the supermarket area over here now i want also to get some few smartphones over here uh, let me just give user smartphones so let's just give iphone uh, 15 to um, to uh, to andy today okay andy this is for you you got, you just got iphone 15 pro max okay uh, with charger okay so that's good you have to take care of it okay that's great okay so we're just we're just giving away a lot of iphones today okay that's just for all of you okay so who else want okay baron so let's just give baron an, uh, a new um baron this is your iphone okay iphone 15 pro max with charger okay so a uh, great great enough this is how they are done and uh, um you have covered almost every aspect of the supermarket, right? But by this point. So um, now we are going to, um, thank you so much, Andy, my friend. You, you have just got a new, a new wife and you should be super happy today, okay? Uh, so um, now actually, um, now actually it comes to the troubleshooting areas, okay? Obviously he'll just put you, if you have designed the complete network, so this is how you design, okay? This is how you do, uh, you first tell, okay, you, you first tell the supermarket owner, okay, that's fine. I can design, I can give you a blueprint of the, um, you can say your supermarket network architecture, and you just uh, do this kind of simulation, your home laptop or your office, and you just print a color print and you just say, hey, we have a meeting today. We, you just discussed yesterday that we are going to install new computer and all the stuff. And you just uh, discuss the, the things that this is the total cost, this is how we get the switches. This is how we get computers. They are connected by 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 by, by fiber optic, by CAT six cables, CAT seven. We have labor charges over here, so you have to get an estimate of each and everything. And you also the one of, one of the most important thing, your own charges. Okay, you're a technical person now. Okay, you're a skilled person now. By the way, so you should be proud of yourself, every one of you. Okay, super dedicated person. I, I like the um, the hard work you have done, the sacrifices. This is what you got. Okay, now you're a skillful person. You have to charge people for your hard work. Okay, and this is how you make a blueprint of it. So once you design this, once you implement that on the uh, on any building, if it's small organization, if it's supermarket, if it is a school, if it's a college, if it's a university, the list goes on. Okay. So uh, for any businesses, so uh, if you have designed that, so you are the master of this network, right? And obviously they'll, they'll say, okay, can you give, uh, can you uh, like maintain this network? I'll just give you like on monthly basis, some kind of phase so you can have your own standard living and you can run my system like uh, from now on. So this is how you, you, you get the job is how you are done, okay? And now uh, let's suppose you have an issue, okay? There is an issue, okay? You just um, you just got uh, you, you just got uh, a network error, okay? How would you troubleshoot that? Remember, we have discussed about some basic fundamental, the art of troubleshooting, how to troubleshoot a basic network, any enterprise network, and a big network, even your home network. You can you can you can quickly like let's suppose if your laptop is working fine on your home router, and your cell phone is not. What does it mean? It means that your router is totally working okay. There is a problem with your cell phone, right? So uh, this is how you like uh, you you uh, make the conclusion of the issue in IT. Okay, you have to go for for the if else condition. If this is okay, so why would be this not okay? If that is okay, it should be like fine. Huh? Okay, if this switch is working fine, it means that I have an issue after this switch, right? So you have to be a little kind of, you can say, um, uh, a kind of medicine person. You have to, um, you have to, uh, you have to think a lot. By the way, in the troubleshooting phase, okay. So uh, make sure uh, whenever you discuss something with the, your own self, so there is no one beside, or you just have to look uh, to your left and right. Okay, no one's here, so you just have to think about it. Okay, so if it means that this switch is not working fine, it's the back switch. It will make some kind of, you can say, kind of scientist kind of person. Okay, it's so, you have to be super focused, okay? Just kidding. You just have to think fast and you just have to resolve it. 
Simple as that. So let's suppose if your laptop is not working fine, let's suppose inventory laptop number two is not working fine, that's at the very eight. Um, and uh, what you have to do is, I have to share one very good thing over here. You all can just go to your bottom left corner. You just have to type CMD, okay, command prompt. I think you should be aware of it. Uh, I'll be sharing my screen also. Uh, you should be able to, uh, to see this kind of screen, okay? You can just type CMD. I'll just also type in the, it's called command prompt, okay? You can also uh, type complete command prompt over here. So this is, yeah, great, CMD, just at your bottom left corner, okay? You just have to type command prompt, okay? This command prompt is one of your, you can say your, your super great friend, okay? Super, super great. But this command prompt um, has some, some, some great magics for you, okay? Believe me, it, can, it, it will resolve a lot of your issues, okay? Over here, you have to learn one command that's called ping.google, okay? Ping is actually an ICMP command, uh, Internet Control Message Protocol uh, over here. Yeah, CMD, obviously. Thank you so much. So you just have to write ping a Google a dot com minus T, okay? So it is, um, let me just also type this for you people. I think you should be able to see in the chat room. The reason I am showing this one, um, this is actually um, uh, whenever you get an issue, okay? And now, okay, let me just uh, once brief you this one. This is a response from Google, okay? Since I have typed ping google.com, so uh, pinging google.com, um, this is the Google uh, IP address, remember? Whenever you go to any browser, you say, hey, uh, you just type google.com. So the DNS actually, uh, that, that actually works for you. They convert this IP address to a text format so you can add, you, you're like easy, easy uh, readable, you can easy write, you can easy read, okay? So it's the DNS over here. Then we have, um, this is a response from, this is the IP, IP address of Google. This is the bytes, we have 32 bytes. This is the byte of ICMP protocol, okay? And we have, uh, we have the time, okay? The time of response. I have 37 milliseconds, okay? You may have a different one, that's okay. Uh, the minus T is actually for trace, okay? It is for trace. So it means that you're telling them that you have to trace that. I don't want to let you, uh, to let you out of it, okay? So minus T, uh, this is obviously the domain name that we have done. And this is minus T, it means it's for trace. So I have to make control C for, uh, for stopping that. You can also do a quick google.com. If you don't want minus T, that's okay. So it will do like one, two or three and it will get stopped, okay? Got the point? I didn't put minus T over here. So it just gets stopped after two or three or four responses and you can have a conclusion of that over here. The pink statistics for uh, the IP address of Google and the packet sent are four, received four, lost zero. So we have zero lost percentage. The approximate round trips, round uh, trip time in millisecond is the minimum is 37, the maximum is 40. So that's okay. The average is 38. So who can tell me what is the, um, you can say uh, affordable uh, milliseconds that we can afford up to how many can we afford? Who can tell me that? Anyone? Uh, can it be 2,000? Can it be 3,000? Can it be, uh, can be any number? I just want any of, uh, it's okay if you're wrong. You just have to guess. Anyone from your side, please? What are like the maximum, uh, the maximum millisecond time, like over here, that we can afford, okay? After that, that makes disturbances for us. So what is any idea? Uh, okay, Landry, thank you so much, 3,000, uh, okay. Anyone else? That's okay. Uh, so I, I'll just also share the experiences that why, why, why is it required, okay? It is super, super great for your knowledge, okay? 
a very, very great troubleshooting tactics. Okay, you'll be, okay, thank you so much. Uh, uh, thank you so much, Olian, thank you so much. You are super, okay. Okay, 2000. I just need a few more responses just to check um, um, how are you like uh, setting your mind so I can just make that in a in, in a good manner. So little a little more I just need a few more responses. How many how milliseconds do we still need? like we cannot afford after that millisecond. Let's suppose if it's like, 6,000 or maybe 7,000, so we cannot afford after that. Okay, so let, let me just give it, okay. It should be, uh, yeah, that's great. Uh, that's great, number 59, thank you so much. Um, yeah. So uh, thank you so much, number 59. Joseph, thank you so much, my friend, 4,500, that's okay. But um, the average is like, it should be, um, uh, it should be, um, Within um within a two hundred to uh three fifty, or maximum for five hundred. Okay, although it's not recommended. The 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 less you are having it, the more it will be efficient. Okay, now if it is like above than hundred, so if um, if it's above than hundred, uh, if it is above than hundred, so uh you'll you'll say okay, is it continued like. Today is like above 100, tomorrow it's like 200, then it's like 700. So if it gets increasing, something is super wrong with your network, okay? It's maybe from the vendor side, from the ISP, internet service provider side. So you can call them, you can say, hey, I have a lot of, you can say delay time over here. Uh, now, what are the, you can say the, the disadvantages of late milliseconds uh, in, in our network? In Zoom call, for example, on WhatsApp calls, on Teams call, or if you're watching stream Netflix and all the stuff, these online streaming websites, it will get buffering, okay? So those will be disturbed. So that's why you should always, always check that, okay? So within uh, within uh, 10 till, uh, till 200 or 300, it's okay. If it's like above than 300 or four, if it's about like even then 500, if it's like 600, 700, something is going wrong. So you have to rectify that, okay? By the way, you, you can check that in, on your networks and you can easily uh, figure out which one is or which one is like a um, better one, okay? So now why did I show you this one? The reason uh, uh, there, there's a very great, you can say uh, an explanation for that. If uh, if you if you if you go to your this laptop inventory two laptop and you go to your CMD and you just ping Google.com, so if it give you a response of that, that milliseconds, it means that this request was sent over here via this switch, and the switch then uh, send that request to uh, your pinging Google right, your pinging internet and it released to that switch. This one actually got a request from the switch and uh, this one went to the router and the router went to the internet. How cool is that? So it means this, your entire path is correct, okay? There's nothing wrong with this, uh, with this laptop if you got Google. If you didn't got, so you have to uh, ping maybe this user, the reception PC, okay? Maybe the reception PC. It's hundred meters, so uh, you have to you have to be uh, you have to be fine enough with the hundred meter. Okay, the maximum range you can say hundred meters is fine enough for a cat six cable. But these days they have the fiber optics, so they have super great range. You don't have to worry about it. Okay, you can have those fiber module, and um, you can easily install that for long distances. Thank you so much, for that for uh, for for the question. By the way. Okay, so um, this is how you, for example, if it is not pinging google.com, it means something is wrong with the switch. So how do you know this switch is wrong? You have to then uh, know the IP address of reception PC. So if you uh, ping that reception PC uh, IP address, it, the request goes this way, it goes to switch, it goes to this switch, and the switch just go to this computer. It doesn't go to the router, remember, okay? It just go to this PC. 
And when the response come up, so it means that your this part is working fine. Your this which is also okay. This which is also fine enough. Okay, so it is it is it is okay enough, and you are good to go with it. This one is also okay because we have finger reception PC. This is how you troubleshoot things, right? This is how you make yourself super skillful. Okay, this is how you go for 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 the ground realities. Okay. Uh, the same applies for you, for your cell phone, for your access point. You have to ping out those switches. You have to ping out those systems. You have to do those basic ground level. I can say, uh, you can say those ground level uh, configuration. You have to check that, and you have to make sure that something new is not installed, and all those things are according to the SOPs. And uh, this is how you troubleshoot things. Okay. So these are like super, super important things that you have to keep in your mind and you have to make sure that they are up to standard, okay? So uh, and these were actually some uh, basic scenarios that we were having over here and we'll be discussing a little more on this. So we have to know, this is actually the, the blueprint of uh, any, you can say any uh, network, okay? You have to create, you have to think about it. Okay, let's suppose if I connect 25 computers over here, what about this? Uh, if I connect like 30 computers, like uh, 22 computers on this switch, uh, and I have like more than 600 computers, how can I manage this? So you have to make rules, you have to make sure that they are totally uh, compliant with the with the EOs with the, within the country, you can say um, the, the IT SOPs. Uh, uh, by the way, IT people are, you can say, um, the kings, okay? Everyone is afraid of the IT people, okay? That's one thing for sure. They say these are the magicians of the company, okay? They they just do like two to three buttons and everything is get like, um, everything is going like crazy, okay? This is how it's done. So you can know, uh, you should be able that uh, the power of IT is over there. They have a very great dominancy, by the way, in every organization, enterprise organization, so people are like super, super careful um, regarding, you can say, you know, we don't have to ever bother any IT person, okay? And especially those who are like little kind, you can say little angry type of persons and they'll say, oh my goodness, I'll just make sure you don't get even the internet like two kbps on your system. So you just have to, it's just, it's not ethical by the way, I'm just, you can say, uh, telling you that you have actually, they are acknowledging your efforts. You're a technical person and uh, you're acknowledged by the way. So that's a great thing. I just, you can say uh, when people are saying that, okay, something is working on, it's great, everything is fine enough. There's a lot of hard work behind it, okay? The same applies for the IT people as well. It's just like you can say a surgeon is waking up, hey, it's emergency, you just have to operate this patient, simple as that. So everyone uh, praises that doctor and say, thank you so much for saving your life. So uh, in the in the, you can say in the in the IT world we actually save computers and they'll say thank you so much for saving my laptop and all this. Okay, great enough. So now uh, let's just push on to some a few more things. Um, uh, we were uh, we were just uh, we were saying how can we um, uh, troubleshoot um, the slowness of our laptops or desktops? How can we make that sure that they are totally up to mark? So if you just go to your uh, to your bottom uh, left corner and type Windows and R key, uh, R key and you just have to press MS config, right? When you press MS config over here, you should be able to see such kind of uh, windows over here. Let me just share that with you in a very little while. You should be able to see uh, this kind of window, right? I have just typed MS config. Let me just type for you MS config, okay? And you just have to press, it is with, uh, you just have to press Windows key, Windows uh, key plus R, okay? So you'll get to run, okay? When you get to run, um, then you have to type MS config, okay? I hope everyone is, um, going with these rules. So these are some um, MS config, yeah. Daya, thank you so much, yeah, it's MS config. So uh, these are some, you can say, some very essential things you have to um, 
you have to be aware of it. We have the startup selection. We have the startup selection over here. Uh, load all device drivers and services, okay? It means that everything will be as it is. So there's no change, you just have to load everything. And I don't want to like enable or disable the selective programs and all the stuff, just let it was, okay? It's just like a new car. So you want to be at uh, its own state, but there are people that say, hey, I can make this car more better, okay? I can make that more better by just having the slight changes. So it only depends on you. If, you're, if your computer is not bothering you, so don't wake up that dude, okay? That uh, trouble dude. If, uh, if the laptops wake up and they give you errors, you'll be just, you'll just get fuel by the way, that's for sure. Because these are electronic machines and you're never gonna trust, okay? So uh, it, it will be working totally fine at up to 100 marks, okay? The, at, at this very moment. And God forbid, maybe after a few like minutes and all the stuff, everything will be just like on zero. It's my goodness, I've just attended my training. How can this be like possible with me? And how can, how can be this? done so it's electronic thing okay a simple as you can be like burnt out you can see a fluctuation can be occurred maybe uh maybe you have like uh, your very last stage of the uh, hard drive maybe uh maybe someone comes up and you just uh and you're just having a cup of coffee and you just throw on your keyboard it can happen everything can happen right so you have to be super careful regarding those electronic devices. They are not up to 100% mark. As we discussed, you should always, always have an external um, hard drive, an external hard drive with yourself to keep up your sensitive data, your family pictures, your documents and all the stuff in a safe place. So even if you had any kind of crashes and all the stuff, you can easily recover, okay? So then we have diagnostic startup. Just one of like, you can say very heavy word diagnostic startup, okay? It's just like you can say, um, uh, it, it, it's too much like uh, low the basic devices and services only. So uh, this is not recommended by the way, if something's like uh, to do work totally fine. If it's not working, then you can just start up with, you have selective startup, that's where you come. Load system services, load setup startups, okay? Selective services, You what you do is actually, uh, you give those services over here. You, you see those all services? These are all services you can just check on hide all Microsoft services. These are essential ones, so you have to make sure it's, uh, it's checked. And over here, um, a lot of people are like, they don't use uh, the Microsoft OneDrive. So it's always whenever they open their computer, there's a certain program that you have to wait for them and you just have to say, oh my goodness, okay. I am on a super urgent work and you're telling me to uh, to get this deal on, on an ad on my computer. It's so much kind of, you can say, weird. Why, why would I take this, uh, like something? So it's just like those all A's and all, you have to take care of that, okay? So let's suppose I don't like, um, uh, I really like work on a job acrobat update services. So I have, I have like, uncheck that. Why is it consuming my memory, my RAM, my hard drives, my, uh, my system, they, are, they have acquired that, right? So, okay, Dell is fine enough. I get most of the uh, time in touch with them. Uh, it's also okay. So uh, if you go over here, I have Google Chrome uh, elevation services. Uh, you can like, uh, you, you can, uh, you can uh, mark it or it really depends on you, okay? You can see over here, a lot of useless services, okay? You just have to uncheck that and make sure they are not uh, consuming your resources, okay? This is where you get your startup, okay? And when you click on that, a task managers open up, okay? Let me just show you the task manager, something very, very cool, okay? You can type, by the way, at your, uh, at your bottom left corner, you can just type task manager. And I think you should, all, you should be able to access this tool on your systems, okay? If you're having it. Uh, okay, so this is the startup applications that you're having it. So let's suppose this is the VPN that I have disabled. I don't work on it. I have the Teams terminals over here. Um, task manager, sorry. Uh, task manager, okay. You have to put a space. I think I should, uh, if I tie. 
Yeah, you have at the very top task manager. You just have to type TS key MA and then I think at the very top, you should be able to see that icon. So you can have those, um, those services over here like I have. If you don't like, let's suppose Microsoft to do, you can just disable that. You can just enable as per you, like I have the Skype, you can disable or enable as per your requirement, okay? That's super, super important. You should all, one of the most important thing is the, um, um, the performance, okay? You can just press, yeah, it is task manager. You can also press control alt delete all these three buttons, okay? Your left bottom control, uh, CTRL, then also Alt, then also Delete at the top. So when you press all these, uh, you should be able to access Task Manager also from that um, window, okay? Now, these are the processes, okay? This is how your computer is actually occupied, right? So um, this is something very cool, very great enough to help you out for your, um, for to help you out how your computer is used. This green means that this process group is in efficiency mode to limit resources used by the process. So in the new, you can say the new laptops and all those systems, they have given that option. If you're not using something, they'll just put that into sleep. So like if you open like 28 Google uh, Google um, Google tabs, they'll just put that into, into the sleep condition, okay? Before you're not using, if you want to use that, so obviously they'll make that active again. So we have Microsoft, uh, we have uh, the memory of 1216 MB that's occupied by Google Chrome. The processor is like um, 0.1 maybe. We have the disk 0.1 and the task manager is actually creating 1.1. So this is how we have the Zoom application also that's getting almost 54 MBs, megabytes. And over here we have all those resources. So over here you can you, you can see that hey, I'm not using that much system memories. I'm not using a, you can say a huge application. Then why my computer is slow? So you you just have to jump into this task manager and you just have to see the performance over here. They'll give you all the requirements. So they'll they'll give you okay. These are your processes. These are your parts. So if there is something unknown that you don't know, you just have to right click on it. Let's suppose this is the terminal. I don't know this task. Let's suppose just end this task, okay? You just have to click right click on it and just end that so your resources can be utilized. So if I go to performance, I may get a relief over here if you see the graph. It is just the, um, it is just like a patient graph. You're having it, those ACGs on hospitals. So the same goes over here. You have the CPU, the brain of your patient is working totally okay. So it means that this computer is alive. Uh, so there's nothing wrong with it, okay? The memory is fine. They're, they're still there, like we're having a great memory over here. Almost like we're having 5.3 gigabits available for us. So the disk is actually also like, um, this occupy this is the Wi-Fi um, speed that we are having it. This is the entire you can see all the stuff. This is the GPU graphic processing unit. So you can see all those three D kind of marks. Those copy video decode one, video decode two, and we have the GPU one over here of NVIDIA GeForce. You can see all those processes over here too. Okay, so I just go over here just. Um, just have a slight look on it and see that how can, uh, is it my, it, like all my uh, laptop or desktop or tablet, like resources are fully occupied or there are unwanted softwares like viruses. So normally what, uh, what the hackers do, they just, they just install any software on your laptop or your desktop. They utilize these memory, okay? They utilize and they sell your memory, by the way, okay? They utilize, they do processing on your laptop and you don't even know about it, that, oh my goodness, I'm just, I'm just, you can say, I'm just chill out in the garden and people are renting my laptop. How, how you can say, uh, you're not even aware of it? 
So it is your own personal belonging, your private laptop. You, there, there may be super sensitive documents of your entire family, your, your work and all the stuff. So you should always take care of it, right? You should always jump out to the performance task manager and see if all our legal process, if you know these processes, okay? When you know these processes, you can easily like find out the performance. You can say, hey, that's fine enough. These are like the optional process we can easily uh, these these should be like taken this kind of CPU, memory, C drive, the Wi-Fi, and all the stuff. Okay, else you'll be just uh, you'll be just on your vacation, and uh, other people will just utilizing your your laptop as a rent. Okay, so always be aware of it. This is the uh, some background process you can always uh, you can always check into those background process as well, and you can just have a slide to go over here. We have a lot of processes over here, almost. Um, there are a lot of, you can say, you can go for those processes and uh, see if uh, they can help you out, go to the properties, they can give you the program uh, details over here that it was installed uh, on this state. It was modified on 16th of nine, like yesterday. So you can, you can, you can see these things of all of these actual laptops, all of these. Um, all of these uh, uh, programs and all this stuff. Okay? So the performance is done, process is done, app history, you can see which apps have you, uh, you like, uh, you have gotten in your, you have accessed 3D Viewer, Admin Lite, or Letter, and you, have, you can see all of these are like, like access a lot of time. You can have your startup applications and this is also something very great enough. Like you don't need to have one drive, right? You just have to click, right click on it, disable it. Now do you see over here, it is disabled, okay? If I enable that, it should get enabled at this point, at the status point, okay? This is the status point, okay? So you can see these startup uh, applications. You can, you can go for that. Those are unwanted. You don't want to use or you, have, uh, you don't need those. You can you you should you should be able to disable by now so your computer can get more faster enough to boot up and uh, you can work normally. Okay, you can see your uh, users already over here, and these are the the details that you're having of each process. Uh, the process ID, you have the status, username, CPU, the memory, uh, in active and private working architecture description. You can see all of these over here of those processes that you're running in. So they have been quite fine enough up to these services. And uh, one of the very, very important sector of this is the services, okay? You can just type in, uh, in the bottom left corner, you can just type services. I think you should be able to get that at the bottom windows corner, just type, services okay an app should be at the top and you should be able to access services okay just open services please um, services okay one of the most most important thing okay we have services remember So you just have to go to your services. And when you go that, you should be able to see uh, the services tab, right? So once you are on the services tab, or once you are on the services tab, uh, you will be having tens of these services. These are the basic services that actually whenever you uh, boot up your computer system so they these are the services that that they are made up and this is how your windows load up and you works all the time for example you, your wi-fi runs on one of wlan service okay if you just press wlan over here you can see um the wi-fi service over here right so if i go to the to the very bottom, I think I should be able to see that, right? So there are a lot of other services as well. The basic services you can see over here. Um, it's very weird, why could I find the, that is the WPN, we have the WSearch over here, we ran over here, 
I'll just go to the main services tab and just see what else. And they have all those description, by the way, and you can easily find those. Just let me connect those. Yeah, services, obviously. Let me just share my screen. And I just have to type services. This one at the top, the right corner of your screen. And you can have the so if you click on any of these, they'll tell you a complete story that's hey, this service for ActiveX installer, and you see all of these things, and you can easily like access those, right? If you go for one of the uh like as we discussed, the Wi-Fi server, this is your Wi-Fi service, okay. WN wireless local area network, okay. You can go to the properties of this and you can say they will tell you. Okay, this Dublin, as we see, a service provides the logic required to configure, discover, connect to, and disconnect from a wireless local area network. So how cool is that? You can stop it, uh, you can have a login, you can have recovery of it, restart the service, you can have dependencies of the service. So like this service is dependent on that service. So when you go for any organization support and all that stuff, they may have services that can be dependent, okay? Like if this service fails down, the other service, uh, the other service should be uh, informed or it should also get stopped, okay? Because that setup won't work. So this is how it is done. And uh, you should always, always be able to um, recognize those. And uh, we have Windows Time over here, Windows Update services over here that you see. You have the Windows Search that's providing you when you're searching all the stuff. So you have a lot of great, these are the combination of services that make up Windows for you. And this is how you uh, access your Windows operating system. Most of the time these services get interrupted. It stops like one of the great one is the printer spooler service, we call it uh, like this one. So whenever like you don't get prints from your system, always, always, Regarding the printing, always check out this print spooler service. If it is like running like over here, it is running, right? You can see my screen, right? So uh, you can just you, you, you can just go to uh, you can just go to uh, to this print spooler service. You can just restart it and it will take a little time and you're good to go with it. So this is how it is done and this is how you can troubleshoot um, the things easily. Um, Mr. Akin is, I think, uh, just waiting for us to have uh, quick words. We have covered like uh, most of the um, uh, the the practical stuff. So I think you should be able to access those things. You should be able to um, to have an idea how things are working on now, and you should be able to be a good troubleshooter. By the way, excellent. Um, thank you so much, Naza. And um, hey team, as always, one of the key things is we just have to keep practicing, playing around, right? There is a class on uh, Cisco network packets that it's offered by Cisco. I'll send you all the link. You can download the packet and play with it. I will recommend we just go ahead and take that class. It might require you to put your email and just register for the class. Let me see if I can send the link to you right now and just have all of us register for it. It's really nice. Um, you know, let me send that class to us in the chat and just go ahead and register for that class right now. And the beautiful thing about it is that it gives you a lot of good context and you can easily start seeing everything as I is doing right now. We can immediately start playing with it ourselves, you know, simulating different scenarios yourself and if you don't know cisco they are probably one of the largest um, network company in the world they build most of the switches routers they are like the ferrari of the industry right there are some other players out there today they are hp fortinet smaller companies or even big companies but they have the early brand recognition so they are pretty popular so if i'm a CISO, or CEO or CIO in a company, most times 
because I just want everybody to shut up, I would rather buy Cisco. It might not be the best tool to use at times, but it's a tool you can use and you can never go wrong in terms of nobody will come back and tell you you bought something wrong. You know, just because they are popular out there, they have the largest market share around that space. So it's a good program. Just take it and um, enjoy it, you know. And one thing I will challenge everybody, as always, remember, we are giving you the foundation. The expectation for us is you build on those foundations. Very important. The way this will work is, a few of us have told us we want to do the certification. We want to work on the you know professional exams later. We encourage it, but don't let's lose focus. In IT especially, what sells the most is skill. All right? So even if you have the professional certification, which is good, we encourage the uh, upcoming folks to do it because it will give you that psychological confidence. I get it. But honestly, what brings bread and butter to horse is the skill, the practice, the uh, extra layer of knowledge you are building at the moment. So don't second guess it. Just be a, an aggressive learner. Everything we've talked about, go back and listen again. The link I just sent to you for the Cisco um basic class to take it to kind of simulate and just learn as much as you can um, go back and watch some of the videos again and i challenge you in the next give yourself the next three months before the end of the year give yourself a goal to potentially write a professional certification potentially um do a program in IT, take it a step further, all right? To me, that's the beauty of mentorship. When your mentee takes things to a different level, you know, it makes us just, it blows us away because that's the goal. We know the greatness in it, is in everybody. We just want to call it out and say, you know, you got this, you can do this, put the work, put the extra layer and just keep building. And believe it or not, even for us that have the tag of, experience we learn every day every time it's a learning curve there's so much you know even in IT that i probably don't know too um and it's vice versa we keep learning that's the way it is if you find yourself in tech you've signed an agreement to be a perpetual lifelong learner no easy way really i wish i could tell you it would be easy that we not need to learn anything again as a matter of fact let me be honest if you leave IT for six months and you come back, sometimes you have to relearn a lot of things because there's always something changing every time. So just be an aggressive learner. I challenge you also take a lot of um, programs in terms of seminars, webinars, workshops, and conferences. Those are the easy ways to keep making yourself relevant, you know? And everything we are saying is what Nazar and I do too, because we keep learning, we keep keeping ourselves relevant. Also, check technology news. So uh, um, maybe a lot of students may be thinking that maybe Akin and Nazar have found a software that they have installed and they have learned everything in a single week. Mm -hmm. So it's not the case, okay? It's not the case that we have done that like in a super, like a week or a month. So it's like experience, I can, like you can see our mantra. So it's like uh, tens of years of experiences, the hardships, the dedication, the work and all the stuff he has done is, is so much grateful. You uh, you don't know, but uh, since we have, uh, we have seen his dedication, we have seen how he has uh, provided to community so uh, thank you so much for that. So th it's all about the hard work that they are paying off, okay? Uh, you just have to be dedicated. And I think these students have already made up. It's just the third week and we have like uh, most probably our very last week, like the coming one. So um, we will be planning some interesting activities on, uh, on that class and we'll make sure to bring up something that, uh, that you can benefit more from it, from this free session. Uh, so, uh, 
these uh, these trouble uh, techniques, these troubleshooting techniques, these uh, real time scenarios that we are providing, that we are making you to think about it, is actually uh, to make you uh, to make you skillful. Okay, this is how it's done in the IT. Believe me, if I were like on your stage and someone was taunting me something like that, I think we would be like, maybe uh, I and I can would be like in Mars or maybe in a different planet. So you're so lucky people, okay? So lucky people, believe me, it's not just you can say that the words that I'm saying, it's just like the dedication you provide and we are like super great uh, with sharing those experiences with you. No, no one does that. You can follow this course like we have designed is totally different from the other courses are you, you can surf on you can attend that they just stick to the book okay now the greatness of this course that we uh, discussed before the sessions was to make them practical to make uh, to show them skills to make them the, uh, you can say uh, to give them ability to think about a resolution to think about as you can say a quick solution for it problems so uh, this is one thing we were discussing, uh, and this is something really cool. You should always be like uh, in touch with those things. So um, over to you, Akan. I think uh, you're, Thank you you're, so much, you're doing great. And folks, yeah. we, we, we don't want to, we have targets for each of our program every week. So once we hit it, we, we are fine with asking us to just enjoy your weekend. And um, always remember nothing is impossible. Put the work, you are winners already, in my opinion, showing up and just put the extra layer. This might be hit for you professionally, I can tell you. For some of you, when you look back in your career professionally in the next three, four years, this might just be the starting point for you in technology. And um, we would just be honored to be a little footnote in your story of greatness, really. And that's all we can hope for, really. Um, we challenge you, don't quit. Just keep building, keep adding layers. Some of us are students, some of us are professionals, some of us are in nursing field, we are truck drivers. We are in different phases of our life. We're transitioning from one career to the other. Some are trying to move to diaspora. Whatever your story is, I'll tell you one thing. A lot of people doing this are not as smart as you are are not as brilliant as you are. They are just driven and they had the opportunity. So that's all. So it's it's a it's a fair, fair game. Another beautiful thing we all know already, it's one of those fields in the world that expose you to work remotely, a lot of remote jobs. Secondly, the compensation is pretty decent out there, to be honest, compared to other fields. And um, it's prestigious. You can build a career for yourself and potentially leave a legacy. So that's what we can hope for. And uh, please, as always, if you are not in our group, the WhatsApp group, I will send the link again right now. Please do me a favor, join the link so that uh, we try to keep it engaged during the week. We share a lot of good stuff just to kind of you know, keep us stimulated and thinking. So I, I just added it to the group right now. Join the WhatsApp group. If you are not on our YouTube page also, please join the page immediately. Um, there are pretty good resources we've designed in the YouTube page also. So, you know, join our YouTube channel. Click on the like button, subscription. And uh, for other programs, we always have interview preparation, so many things going on. And if you click the like and notification, you can know when we have an interview. In the next two hours, actually, we have an interview session for some folk having interviews tomorrow. So it's just a good way. So join that community, keep engaging, and um, have fun doing it. Um, Thank you so much. Let's give it up for Naza as always. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you, everyone. You, thank you all. Thank you all for Appreciate the it. great dedication. So we are we're, we're having great heroes over here, right? So we'll just stick uh, to them. And they have already passed uh, almost the struggle. So uh, just on the edge, okay, just on the on, on the tip of the, you can say, maybe a few meters only, and you just yep. cross the bridge. Simple as that. So thank you so much, everyone. Thank you for your dedication. Thank, Appreciate you, it, sir. thank you. Thank you. And everybody, yeah. enjoy the rest of the week. Always remember, impossible is nothing. Let's go for it. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.
Okay.